Hello everybody, Ranger John Heron here with Huntsville State Park and I want to talk to you today about a very important navigational tool, the compass. We're about to take a quest here to understand the forces that guide us on our journey. Now the earliest compass goes back over 2,000 years ago in China. Of course they were using just a little bit of magnetized iron and they weren't using it necessarily for guiding them on their physical journey but on their spiritual journey. They used it as a form of divination. Now later on it was discovered that yes, they could use it for land navigation. It was used in military purposes. Naval vessels used it for years to navigate large expanses of oceans when there were no landmarks. And then now people use it for competition and land navigation and recreational use the world over. Of course, if we're going to use one of these devices to guide us on our journey through life, it's good to understand how to do it properly and that way we end up in the area we want to be. So during this video I'm going to teach you about the parts of a compass. We're also going to learn how to take bearing and then we're going to talk a bit about declination as well. So let's get to it. So there are many types of compasses out there. I've seen military compasses, compasses on apps, even some of just small little clip-on compasses. I'm going to be teaching compasses today using one of my personal favorite, and in my personal opinion, it's an easiest one to use, and that's using a card compass. Uh, now, they make a couple of different ones. Some are a little bit longer. Some will come with some extra bells and whistles on it, but they are some of the easiest ones to use for navigation. Now the parts of the compass, you have first off the base plate, which is a large, clear, uh, sometimes square or rectangle base plate for it. They have rulers on the side, which can be helpful if you have a scale on the map and you need to measure distance right there or if you need to draw any lines on your map. Now on the base plate, there's going to be an arrow. And that's your arrow of direction or arrow of travel right there. Now. They're going to have a bezel, which is going to be this round part. As you see, it turns. And they've got all these numbers around it, and that's the degree of direction. So, you know, if you were facing 180 degrees, just pretty much directly south, you could line that up with your arrow of direction here. Inside the bezel, you see that little outline of an arrow. That's your orienting arrow, okay? And I like for exercises to call that the shed. I mean, it's just the outer line there looks a little bit like a shed. And then inside of it, we've got the magnetic needle. All right. Now, for that to work, it helps to have it laying flat. If it's sitting up like this, it's tough to get a magnetic read. But if we lay it flat, that red needle is going to face north. All right, now you want to make sure that there's no magnetic surfaces around it either. If I'm holding it too close to my belt and I'm wearing my multi-tool, that can affect how the compass reads. So you always want to make sure you have it flat and there's no magnetic surfaces around it. So we have the base plate, the arrow of direction. We've got our bezel with our degrees on it. We've got our orienting arrow, which is the shed, and we've got our magnetic needle there. I like to nickname that one Fred. So those are different parts of the compass. So we're going to learn how to take a bearing. Okay, so one of the ways to do bearing is to take bearing off of a landmark. So we're going to start by taking a bearing off the sign there. So I'm going to aim my arrow of direction towards that sign and now I'm going to turn the bezel here and what I want to do is put the needle into the orienting arrow I think we call that we call the needle Fred and we've called the orienting arrow the shed so what we're doing is we're going to put red Fred in the shed so there we go so we have our arrow direction pointed at our object we have the needle Fred inside the orienting arrow which is a shed and if we look up top here it's a bearing of 260 degrees now let's try something else here we're going to take it 
right off of that bird. House there. Again, arrow of direction pointed at it. We're going to then line up. Put Red Fred in the shed. Brings it about 70. Alright, so we've learned how to get a bearing off of an object. What if somebody were to give us a bearing? So if somebody were to hand us a bearing of 90 degrees, what we want to do is we want to rotate the bezel so we get 90 degrees lined up with our arrow of direction. Then we'll lay it flat in front of us, our arrow of direction pointing away from us, and now we want to go back to putting Red Fred in the shed. Now we've already set the bezel, so we don't want to turn the bezel anymore. But what we can do is turn ourselves, and we want to rotate our body. So Red Fred is in the shed, and now we are lined up with 90 degrees. Now I'm going to do another one, let's say 200. So again, I want to line up 200 degrees with my arrow of direction. I'll hold it out in front of me. And now I'm going to rotate my body. Go this way. I'm going to put Red Fred in the shed. And now I'm facing 200 degrees. Now you can combine those two ways of bearing. Is if you're wanting to head out on a trail and you're waiting for your friend to show up, but you want to start early. So if I wanted to hike the Chica Pin Trail, which is right in front of me there, I could tell my friend, hi, I'm in a nature center, and I'm going to be hiking. Now I've got my arrow direction pointed at the trail. I'm going to line up Red Fred in the shed. There we go. So I can tell my friend I'm at the nature center, and I'm going to be heading out on the trail that's at 280 degrees from the nature center. But the thing is, is if I don't tell them specifically where I was standing, which is at the corner here, if they come over to say the door, and they say, all right, he's leaving at 280 degrees from the nature center. And so that is going to, we've lined up our 280. Now we're going to turn our bodies. So Red Fred is in the shed, and that puts us on the Loblolly Trail, not the Chica Pin. So if you use these combination, it's great, because you can find your bearing and give that bearing to someone else, but you always want to make sure you let them know where you're getting the bearing from, and that way they get started out in the right area. All right, everybody, now we're going to look at the third way you can do a bearing. So we've taken a bearing off of a landmark. We found the bearing that someone gave us. And now we're going to learn how to find a bearing on a map. So I've got my map of Huntsville State Park here. I've got my compass. We are over here at the historic dam and spillway. And we want to head over here to the flatwater ponds. And we want to find out what is that bearing. So the way to do that with the compass is you want to start but at the center of the compass, where you are, okay? The arrow of direction on the card here, we want to aim that in the direction we want to go. So center the compass where we're at, arrow of direction where we want to go. There we go. And now we want to rotate the bezel so that our orientating arrow, that's the shed we were talking about, is lined up with north on the map. And if you remember our video on map reading, we can locate that on the compass. Now, whenever we're working with our compass on the map, we want to ignore Fred. Fred is a magnetic needle in there. Anytime we're working on the map, we don't care where he points. Right now, we're thinking center of the compass where we're at, arrow of direction where we want to go, and the orientating arrow is in line with north on the map. So what that gives us it's about hey, 66, 67 degrees right there. And so now I've got it up off the map. I can look at where Fred's pointing. 
Now it's like our second step of bearing. We have it set already, so we don't want to touch the bezel, but we can rotate the compass and we want to put red Fred in the shed. So there we go. So if I'm standing on the dam and I want to get over to the flat water ponds, I know in what direction I have to travel. So we're going to do this exercise one more time. We're up here at the CCC culverts and we want to head over to the headwater boardwalk. So the way we're going to do that, again, we're going to set the center of the compass where we're at. We want to aim the arrow of direction where we want to go. Now we're going to rotate the bezel so that the orientating arrow is lined up with north on the map. Center of the compass where we're at, arrow of direction where we want to go, orientating arrow in line with north on the map. Now, that looks like it's about 270 degrees with holding it down in front of us, not rotating the bezel but the compass itself. Now we know in what direction we need to go if we want to get over to the boardwalks. So that is how you take a bearing off of a map using your compass. Now something a bit more advanced if you deal with declination, which means there's a difference between true north and magnetic north. Most maps are done with true north as the option. This, these compasses run off magnetic north. Now some maps they'll tell you what the declination is, say if it's two degrees west or ten degrees east, what you would have to do then is figure out, okay, if I'm at zero and we've got a five degree east declination, then I have to do, make sure I add five degrees to all my bearings. Some compasses will allow you to automatically adjust. This one allows me to grab hold of the center and I can change where that orienting arrow is. As you can see, I'm setting it off so it is not quite at zero. Right now it's at 20 degrees, which is a bit further than what I said earlier with five. So that is allowed to change so it automatically figures that in when you put uh, Fred in the shed. Sometimes they'll even come with a little tool that'll help really do micro adjustments on the declination or once you have that declination it'll allow it to lock it in so you don't accidentally bump it while you're out there on the trail. But it's always helpful when you're done with your compass to go ahead and re-zero that back out so you don't forget that. Well everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got to learn a lot about this important navigational tool and the way it can guide you in your journey. So no matter where your next journey takes you, having the proper tools and the knowledge how to use it can bring you great success and hopefully bring you out to one of our state parks. We look forward to seeing you out here.